بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين Now my dear friends and students and fellows who are watching the program on the sessions or programs which I have already recorded in, in continuation with a gap so that you can follow the previous videos if you are interested. And uh, I was talking on the infectiology and one is one bacteria of the century which I call as Helicobacter pylori. Although the coronavirus is the latest uh, or, or got the highest, you know, pain in the last 10 years, although, but it was a pandemic type of a disease. But this disease, which was caused by the Helicobacter pylori, is important in the sense that it was already present since many, many years, or you can say in many decades, or what you can say in many, since many centuries. And, it, and the bacteria was detected as a first of the part of the pathogenesis process in the acid peptic diseases or diseases of the stomach or the duodenum and elsewhere. They have demonstrated that the initiating agent of this problem of APD or acid peptic disease specifically is speaking was as determined as Helicobacter pylori. It was considered commensal and it was at that, known, at that time known as a Compylobacter pylori. In part one of my lecture I have discussed the pathogenesis and microbiology because every part of the bacteria should be covered. This is so important because it is settled out that D. H. pylori bacteri is one of the most important initiating agent in the pathogenesis of the acid peptic disease or ulcerative peptic disease or tumors arising from the stomach and some parts played in also the gastroesophageal reflux disease and some of the diseases of the duodenum and colon also. So that is why it is important. In the sense that it is 100% proof that most of the chronic gastritis B is associated with 100% is associated with the helicobacter pylori. The part one was actually a dry type of a subject. People do not want to listen it because it is based on the pathogenicity and about the histopathology and the cycles which he, the bacteria evolve the source of infection, etc., etc., and epidemiology. Last thing which I have actually forgotten to say was epidemiology. All the people don't want to uh, consider it, rather I will say. Now it is not a pandemic, pandemic yes, not a pandemic, pandemic. It is not pandemic, it is not epidemic, not is a epidemic, epidemic, it is in, not endemic, but it is sub-endemic in the different geographical areas. Because in some of the areas, they have found that 80% have the person who have colonize this bacteria in the stomach with some, some uh, only 5% or 7% are symptomless otherwise 90% have some uh, had some symptoms of the uh, stomach related problems you can see like this pyrosis and heat heartburn and blotting and uh, what is called as gastric bubble syndrome etc etc these type of the presentations are there and it is in Pakistan it is very very common 
type of a problem now. Although I am highly interested in the in my field, that it, uh, rather than telling you too about the H. pylori, that is, uh, it is an infectious disease. That is all. But uh, most of the people do visit me for the cardiovascular illnesses. But uh, from total patient, of, uh, for example, see, I have seen about say. 45, 50 patients a month, uh, for example, it is 30, at least 30 patients are suffering or have got some epigastric bloating or epigastric problems and related, related diseases. So that's why I am talking, uh, you know, uh, in detail about this uh, uh, uh bacteria. The clinical presentations. Look, what has happened is that ninety percent of people infected with the egg pylori never experience symptoms or complications in their zone because it harb they harbor this uh, bacteria and they don't know. However, individuals infected with the egg pylori have a ten to twenty percent lifetime risk of developing the peptic ulcers. Acute infection may appear as an acute gastritis with abdominal pain, stomach ache, or nausea where this develops into the chronic gastritis, the symptoms it present are often those of the non ulcer dyspepsia, NUD, which is called, which was called as functional dyspepsia. Because they cannot differentiate, you cannot differentiate clinically whether the patient harbor this bacteria or not. But in our settings, I'll say, most of the people, they are very sensitive people, we are very sensitive people, they pick up this type of harboring the bacteria very quickly. They are fond of eating, they are fond of eating in the home and the outside, they want to enjoy with eating. And uh, I'm sorry to uh, give this statement that we are living for the eating. We are, they eat, we eat trying to enjoy the life, rather to span our life. This is the problem. So pain typically occurs when the stomach is empty between meals and the early morning hours but can also occur other times. Less common ulcer symptoms include nausea, vomiting and loss of appetite. Now this is the research which of the different journals. And all journals they have, they are uh, published from the outside this country, not to Pakistan. But in my opinion, those who are harboring the lethal, those of, or rather you can say, the efficient number of the bacteria harboring the stomach, the person of, in our setting are very sensitive and they come to us with some type of, some type of symptoms. It is about, it is reverse of this, which is written here. Only 20%, rather 10 to 20% have got no symptoms at all. And when then we, we do uh, just for nothing, uh, because the people, they do not visit the clinic at all. If they, they have some problem, they will come to you, otherwise they will not. Why they are you coming to us? This is a problem. Secondly, the peop those people who are educated, in the cities, they go to the gastroenterologist directly and he is able to demonstrate this type of a problem easily because they spend money and they can go for it. Rather, we are the, not the people. We are internists, we are the family physicians and uh, general practitioners, etc. They are, do not go for, to try to demonstrate this bacteria. Now remember, this is, the, this is the difference between the research which is done outside and this is the research which is done in the country. Now, bleeding in the stomach can also occur as evidenced by the passage of the black stools. Prolonged bleeding may cause nausea, no anemia, it is iron deficiency anemia leading to weakness and fatigue. The black stools are melina. If bleeding is heavy, hematemesis, 
हमें तो क्या जिया मेरे ब्लड सीन हमें तो मिसे आती वोमेटिन वोमेटिस कंटेन्स दी ब्लड क्लॉट्स नियर का इनफॉरमेशन ऑफ दी पालोस एंटम व्हिच कनेक्ट्स दिस टाइम टू डिलीनम इज मोर लाइकली टू लीड टू द डिलीनम अल्सरेशंस विद इनफॉरमेशन ऑफ दी कॉपस दैट इज दी बॉडी ऑफ द स्टमक फंडस इज मोर लाइकली टू लीड टू द गैस्ट्रिक अल्सर्स Individuals infected with the H. pylori may also develop colorectal or gastric polyposis, and this is very interesting condition. I have seen these cases in the colon, and they have got no genetic relation. Polyps, required polyps. That is non-cancerous growth, non-polyps. The non-polyps uh, they are the non-cancerous uh, growths of the tissue projecting. From the mucous membrane to these organs, and usually these polyps are asymptomatic, but gastric polyps may be the cause of dyspepsia. It is possible. Hard one bleeding from the upper GI tract, really gastric outlet syndrome. The colorectal polyps may be the cause of the rectal bleeding, anemia, constipation, diarrhea, weight loss, and abdominal pain. I have seen upper one about seven to ten cases, and in lower one, I have seen four cases. of this type of a problem associated with polyposis acquired polyposis now individuals with the chronic uh, h pylori infection have an increased risk of acquiring cancer this is very important you will left and neglect the association then it is the chance in 10 years it is chance of 50 to 70% they will acquire the some type of cancer of the stomach It is directly related to this infection. These cancers are the stomach adenocarcinoma. I have seen many cases, less commonly diffuse large B cell lymphoma, few cases, and extranodal marginal B cell lymphoma. The stomach rarely I will see, and more rarely of the colon. I have not seen any case of rectum esophagus or ocular adenoxa in obit conjunctiva. This is very very rare. Although, but it is important for the SCP's examination because if somebody is examiner is learning from a journal, he will ask the other side of the involvement, the ocular adenoxa. This is the answer. There is orbit in the cava and of eyelids. Again, there is the same problem going on there. Metaplasia can occur in the conjunctiva and the orbit in the eyelids, lash, and it causes. I think the same type of problem, which is very rare, although. So that is important for the ophthalmologist. Now here you see that this bacteria is harboring esophagus, hip, and uh, stomach, and uh, in its down lower down, it is also harboring in the colon. It can cause gastritis, peptic ulcers, non-ulcer dyspepsia, gastroesophageal reflux disease. At one time, it said that GERD is not associated. Now it is new research that it is associated. So all these cases will cause, at first sight, as inflammation and the ulcerations and more acid are produced. The acid reflux are more and more and more if they they are harboring it in the esophagus, lower part of the esophagus. And diagnosis is to be done. No, it is not a diagnosis exclusion. It is the diagnosis of demonstrating directly or indirectly the presence of H. pylori. Actually, H. pylori is not a disease, but a condition associated with a number of the disorders of upper GI tract. Just like diabetes mellitus is not actually a specific disease. It will cause complications. Just like this H. pylori, you are harboring the H. pylori. It can cause anything related with the stomach, lower part of the duodenum. Or in the lower GI tract, in some cases, testing is recommended if peptic ulcer disease or low-grade gastric mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue lymphoma, that is called maltoma, is present after endoscopic resection of the early gastric cancer of the first degree relatives with the gastric cancer, and in certain cases. Or dyspepsia. Several methods of testing exist. There are two types: invasive type and non-invasive testing methods. Our non-invasive is concerned. 
it is the best one is to doing is non-invasive to do the antibody touches. Problem that in our country only we are doing the IG G of the H pylori. IG G means the infection is present, whether it is harming you or not, you don't know. And it may be ninety percent positive in uh, in some uh, part of our country. This antibody. It is not the diagnostic test. If IgM can be done, in certain countries IgM can be done. IgM, if it is present, the, it, the, the, the uh, symptomatology may be related with the H. pylori. And this is the problem. The kit is costly. And the, even the main laboratories, higher laboratories in the country, they do not perform IgM uh, for, the, uh, for the H. pylori presence. Second test is stool antigen test. Yes, this is the this is how we diagnose commonly because the patient they are not affordable. They cannot afford the the uh, cost effectiveness of the endoscopy and in the and the uh, histopathology and the biochemistry which they have taken it out for the presence of the uh, urease, which is the prime enzyme uh, which I have discussed previously, which is presenting the H. pylori and the carbon urea breath test. This was done uh, since last uh, two decades. Some of the people can do it. Some means, people means some uh, physician can do this carbo carbon uh, urea breath test. And where the patient drinks about, yeah, this is the C14 and C13 Label urea is isotopic, with the bacteria met uh, metabolizes. It, it, and it, is, uh, uh, it is producing the labeled carbon dioxide because it will split it out by urease that can be detected in the breath. Carbon dioxide will be, it is the isotopic carbon dioxide may be detected in the breath. It means that indirectly the H. pylori is present in the stomach. It is it, it is breaking the uh, uh, the urease into the carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide will be coming out in the breath. Isotopic carbon dioxide can be detected and it is the indirect uh, evidence of the presence of the H. pylori. This is not this test more accurate for diagnosis. This is not known. We don't know about it. But indirect comparison puts urea breath test as a higher. This is a breath test. Really accuracy than others. Although in comparison with the antigen test or the antibody test, this test may be more uh, higher uh, sensitivity and specificity, although. But if it is present, because this is the, the test we, we will do in not those people who are not affordable, they are not uh, consented for endoscopic examination. What we will do then? The antigen test, and that's all. Otherwise, after an education therapy, an immune test still be positive. This will be positive. Total uh, antibody titer or IgG antibody is always present. Therefore, a breath test is used for the therapy control. But it is not available in widely in your country. Some people do it. Some people don't do it. Don't do. The problem is this. It is not a non-availability of this test. The problem in our country is this. And important is, is, is the most accuracy, the direct uh, evidence. Is an endoscopic biopsy is an invasive means to test the H. pylori infection. Low level infections can be missed by biopsy. So multiple samples are recommended. For four to six samples should be taken. The most accurate method for the detecting H. pylori infection is with the histological examination. Because it has got a specific histological appearance. At least from the two sides after the endoscopic biopsy, combine they combine this with the rapid urease test or microbial nature culture. You see the uh, endosc uh, the the biopsy reports after endoscopy. They said that the H. pylori resembling bacteria are seen. This is written mostly, but those people, uh, those laboratories who are doing the biopsy with the rapid urease test are more specific. 
and lastly but more most accuracy with the microbial culture direct evidence of the presence of h pylori so in the short we do the stool antigen test that is more specific rather than the antibody those people who can afford it you can do the carbon dioxide or urea breath test and those people who can afford and consented also for the endoscopy then you better to do the biopsy and you will go for the histological examination but it should be combined with the rapid urease test that is the message specific staining will be used if you are taking the biopsy the vaccine study silver staining this is the staining positivity of these bacteria if it is positive it means that the bacteria are positive and you should culture it but these are the you know one uh, summary which is written stool fecal antigen test that is should be done in our country mostly we done urea blood test uh, test are available in certain centers not all serology antibody test quantitative and qualitative actually only the quali uh, qualitative test is present not the quantitative and specifically the total antibody testing igm igg is present we want igm quantitative if it is uh, if you are using for the uh, co uh, the confirmation the endoscopically culture histology rapid urease testing and pcr even can be done the polymerase chain reaction if you take out and the patient can afford the pcr it will cost 7000 rupees in, in the uh, rather than the endoscopy is 14000 culture for the 3000 histopathology for the for 3000 rapid urease test 2000 in 9000 plus 14 23,000 and this will cost 31,000. So you will do if you do all this, it will cost 30 to 32,000 rupees. Uh, probably it is now increased to 35,000. I don't know. But I have not done. Only I have the actually uh, requested about this. Mostly the fecal antigen test, and for those who are consented and affordable, we do endoscopy. But but they are doing not all. all these force they are only doing the histolo histopathology presence of direct evidence the culture the vaccine stain and then rapid urease test is not done by all pcr is rarely performed so based upon the clinical presentation and it is the you know the factory to the therapy which you are we are giving for the pyrosis or harman or what 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 are it is you have to do this fecal antigen test or if it is affordable this more probably this is the answer of your problem of the problem of the h pylori detection is concerned the treatment of the gastritis <coughs> now superficial gastritis either cause acute or chronic is the most common manifestation of pylori infection the signs and symptoms of this gastritis have been found to remit spontaneously in many individuals without resorting to epilepsy irritation problem you do the ppi you go the h2 receptor uh, <coughs> etc and the, uh, 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 the, uh, the 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 symptoms will subside the epilepsy bacterial infection persists after remission in this cases so relapses and remission relapses and remission go on go on and go on Various antibiotics plus proton pump inhibitor drug regimes are used. There are about 14 regimes have been, or 15 regimes have been launched to eradicate the bacteria. Thereby successfully treat the disorder with the triple drug therapy consisting the clarithromycin, amoxicillin, and the proton pump inhibitor, given for about 14 to 21 days of 10 being considered first line treatment. This is one school of thought. Not all. But it, it may be indicated because these drugs are <coughs> difficult to take, not easy. Now this is the whole about it, in the journal. Now the peptic ulcer, non-ulcerative or ulcerative, is that they are detected in the person with the peptic ulcer. The normal procedure to eradicate it and allow the ulcer to heal. The standard first line therapy is one of the weekly triple 
uh, one be triple <coughs> typical uh, triple regime therapy consisting of the acid suppressive therapy most commonly the proton pump inhibitors such as omeprazole or potassium competitive acid blockers such as the now they are doing the bonoprazan is a new drug bonoprazan this is not this is the uh, what is it called potassium competitive acid blocker this is not the proton pump inhibitor but it is another uh, sub classification potassium competitive acid blockers this is the first drug they have invented is bono provan combined with antibiotics clotrimazine and amoxicillin proven week the action of the proton pump inhibitor again that will may reflect the direct bacteriostatic effect actually that they, they, they are doing like this bacteriostatic effect they uh they will they will uh, not able to uh, multiply due to the inhibition of the <coughs> inhibition of the bacterium p type atps and of urease they inhibit it because of the you you have altered the media of the stomach and you are if you are doing is the media is but they are so they can only survive in certain ph you are altering the ph of the stomach so they will, this will cause the bacteriostatic effect the variation of the triple regime have been developed over the years such as using different proton pump inhibitors pentaprazole daviprazole or replacing amoxicillin with the metronidazole for people who are allergic to penicillin in areas with higher rates of the prosomatin resistance other options are recommended such as therapy with reverse nice the treatment of the peptidal cells and has made a cure to the disease possibility previously the only option was symptom control using the antacids or as to antagonists or proton pump inhibitors alone but nowadays because of the introduction of these uh, antibiotics the triple regime or the quadruple regime even are also launched and they have eradicated uh, this infection very successfully all the i have seen 10 to 20% of the cases who are not uh, they are not responded to this therapy so the other therapy will be chosen and it should be given to eradicate this infection this is the, what is i saw the antibiotic resistant disease the antibiotic resistant disease are the diseases in which the, they are not responding to the usually you are using the antibiotics rather the quadruple therapy i have already mentioned it which adds this bismuth collide like bismuth subsalicylate patient with any previous macrolide exposure who are allergic to penicillin a quadruple therapy that consisting of the proton pump inhibitor bismuth you replace the penicillin with the tetracycline and the nitroimidazole it is very important new drug it is antiparasitic agent nitroimidazole for 10 to 14 days is recommended first line treatment uh, option for the antibiotic resistant disease i have used it uh, this drug the nitroimidazole it is it is present it is available in in your country and you can use it if you want but those cases who are resistant because you have done it after one week of the of the of the full therapy and you go for the again uh, the detection of the the uh, h pylori antigen in the in the stool it is positive again then you use this therapy after the treatment of clorpromycin resistance in h pylori therapy the use of uh, they have also added the another version of the levofloxacin the part of the therapy has been suggested those who are resistant with the clorpromycin ingesting lactic acid bacteria exert a suppressive effect on h pylori infection with animals and humans and supplementing with the lactobacillus and the bifidobacterium containing yogurt improve the rates of the dikh apolari mein aap yahan ek kachchi lassi jo istemal karte hain lassi ka pani jo hota hai usme ye paya jata hai otherwise yahan pe available hai in sachet sachet form mein dono hi available hai to aap you can use it along with it Sym- symbiotic vitreate producing bacteria which are normally is present in the tetina sometimes use the probiotics to help 
that polar infection as a junk to antibiotic therapy, like butyrate itself is an uh, antimicrobial which destroys the cell envelope by polarized by inducing re regulated T cell expression. And synthesis of the antimicrobial uh, peptide called LL37, which arises through its action as a stone a D cetylase inhibitor. The bitrate containing uh, drugs are helpful. I have not used it. The substance sulfoprofene, which occurs in the broccoli, you know, which is a vegetable and cauliflower, sulfoprofene has been proposed as a treatment. It will be additive treatment. Periodontal therapy of scaling and root planning has also been suggested as an additional treatment. Periodontal therapy or scaling, because this is the, these are the part of the, you know, the uh, in, uh, habitat of this organism in the gums, around the teeth, in the periodontal areas. So the dentist or the dental surgeon can help us. You, you, you take the bath sheet from there, you can go for the urea, urease uh, uh, evidence and then scaling or root uh, planning should be done for these patients so that the bacteria should be eradicated completely. It will, it, it will not be able to reinvade. These are the new things. I have not used this, even the sulfur of hand. It is present in broccoli and cauliflower has been proposed as a treatment. This is a, pro a research product. The broccoli is present in the broccoli and cauliflower is, you know, is very, very highly cultivated in, in this country. So you are, why, why you are not using this? The people, they said they, they produce gas. So they can use it with, you know, the amount should be reduced rather to avoid it. Broccoli is a very, you know, uh, it is a very important uh, part of the, what you call salad, broccoli. The broccoli is, is a costly item, although cauliflower is a cheap item. These are the new things for uh, anybody, but can be asked by anybody in the examination. How you will eradicate, what are the new versions, etc. Now this is a treatment plan, typical quadruple sequential combination like this. The first one is the typical one, clarithromycin with moxoslin and PPI. Clarithromycin with the metronidazole PPI. Lipoproxacin with the amoxacin with the PPI. And rifabutin plus amoxacin plus PPI. Quadruple is bismuth plus metronidazole plus tetracycline plus PPI. Sequential is PPI. Amoxicillin for five days, followed by the PPI plus clarithromycin plus metronidazole for five days. First you give this one and then followed by the PPI and clarithromycin metronidazole for five, further five days, ten day therapy. The combination products are Helicadec, Palera, Prevec, I don't know about these things. The combination products are produced, they are, uh, they are using in certain countries in which all the, you know, you are, you are taking these drugs uh, in the separately rather than combination form. They are combination of amoxicillin or and clorothamycin or amoxicillin with clorothamycin with metronidazole or the combination of the PPI with amoxicillin, clorothamycin with metronidazole. Now these are present as a one tablet. You will take one or two tablets rather than taking so much tablet, many tablets. It is not available in Pakistan. But I think the separate tablets should be used. They will function more better, better than uh, the, the, the combination of slow releasing, uh, releasing products. Our treatment of cancers are concerned, the external marginal B lymphomas, the first if the stage is an arbor staging system, antibiotic proton proton which is the genes listed previously I have told you, it is the first uh, first line of management. If the initial regime fails, if the external or marginal, 
to eradicate the pathogen patient treated with the alternative protocol, the second therapy should be given, alternative therapy. Eradication of the pathogen is successful in about 95% of cases. Some 50 to 80% of patients who experience eradication of the pathogen develop with 3 to 28 months of remission and long-term clinical control of the lymphoma. So, uh, the surveillance, you know, uh, investigation should be done. In addition to the stomach and the surrounding that the perigastric lymph nodes have also been used to successfully uh, treat uh, these localized cases. So patients with the, that have been treated with the watchful waiting after the anaerobic staying three or four uh, who are free of symptoms with the watchful waiting, if, if they are symptomatic with, immuno, with no, immunotherapy, if symptomatic, then you go for the immunotherapy drug like reduximab, reduximab and given for the four weeks of mind with the chemotherapy like chlorambucil for 6 to 12 months. 58% of the patient attain a 58% progression of the free survival rate at 5 years. That means that they don't have to finish. If someone is coming, then they will be sure to say that I will die. This is wrong. If they have the first protocol, they have the alternative protocol. If they don't have the same, then they have the radiation. They have to do the surgery. They have to do the surgery. Then after that, they have used the other drug immunotherapy and they have been using the chemotherapy like chlorambucil. There is no surgery. But there is a frail condition of three or four patients. Treated with the rotoximab or the chemotherapy drug, cyclophosphamide, alone, frail, stage three or four patients. Only rare cases as well as a positive external marginal B inhibitor regime. The current recommended treatment for the disease is surgical resection afterwards. Last resort or endospoid resection or combined of radiation chemotherapy. Now they are adding the rituximab also. In few reported cases, the polarized sensitive external marginal B cell lymphoma of the esophagus localized disease has been successfully treated with antibiotic proton pump inhibitor regimes only. However, the advanced disease appears less responsive or unresponsive of these regimes but partially responsive to the rituximab. The antibiotic proton pump inhibitors, eradication therapy and localized radiation therapy have been used successfully to treat the H. pylori positive extranodal marginal zone, B cell lymphoma of the rectum also and the colon also, I see. So these are the possibilities and the last is what you go for the surgery. Even the endoscopic resection are very successfully done Combi if you are combining with the radiation and the chemotherapy or immunotherapy. तो ये तो ना उम्मीद है ही नहीं ना तो कोई निकाल के बाहर करो टोटल गैस्ट्रेक्टमी इसमें तो सजेस्ट ही नहीं करते आप ये पूछने का मकसद था अगर सजरी वाले देख रहे हैं इसके ये ये स्लाइड्स तो इसमें तो गौर करें इस बात को लास्ट रिसोर्ट है वो लेकिन उसमें भी जो है पार्शियल की जाएगी यहाँ से एविडेंस आपको मिल रहा है ये नहीं है कि पूरा पूरा जो है ना टोटल गैस्ट्रेक्टमी करते हैं उठा के ऐसा नहीं होता नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट जो है ना केस जो है रिस्पॉन्ड कर जाते हैं लेकिन आपको पहले भी डिस्कस करके बता दिया इसमें डिफ्यूज लार्ज बीस एम लिम्फोमा अगर डिफ्यूज है इफ दे आर डिफ्यूज इट इज नॉट मार्जिनल एग्रेसिव कैंसर दिस इज तो इसमें ये जो है ना कैंसर जो है ये ट्रीटमेंट जो है एज वेल एज मोस्ट इसमें तो ट्रीटमेंट विद एच पर आर नेगेटिव केसेस बिकॉज इट कैन आल्सो कर विद दी एच पर आर नेगेटिव आल्सो इट इस अ पार्ट ऑफ दी बी सेल लिम्फोमा जनरलाइज बी सेल लिम्फोमा इस अ पार्ट ऑफ इट तो इसमें जो है ना आपके पास द थेरेपी जो है जो किए जाएगी एच पर आर इरिटेशन रेजिम्स should be done. If found unresponsive, you go for the chemotherapy, like CHOP therapy or CHOP-like regime, which is chlorambucil ke saath, aap mein dusri drugs daali hai, such first amide vagara. Immunotherapy, the hydroxymab, is second line of therapy ho ghi. Phe third line ke mein ajayana, woh phe surgery aati hai aur local radiation aata hai. Is mein bhi jayana, surgery jayana, part mein ki jayegi, partial. 
has polarized positive diffuse diesel is one has been successfully with one or other combination with zyada to upar wala jo respond kar jata hai lekin agar niche wala aa rahe hain aap in mein therapy de de isko radiation ke sath aur chemotherapy with immunotherapy local radiation aur partial gastrectomy karte hain to ye cases jo hain ye eradicate ho sakte hain possibly hai but ye ek problem hai adenocarcinoma ki majority of the gastric adenocarcinoma cases particularly those are located outside of the stomach cardia that is the stomach junction the treatment of this cancer is highly aggressive with even localized disease being treated sequentially with the chemotherapy and radiotherapy before the pale aap trial denge aap woh trial denge jo main pehle bata chuka hu phir uske baad chemotherapy radiotherapy karenge response dekhenge agar usse bhi nahi hota to phir this send this cancer once developed it is independent of a polar infection then antibiotic proton pump regimes are not used in its treatment agar ye dependent ho jaye to ye zyada tar jo hai na wo एज पर इन्फेक्शन के लिए जो ट्रीटमेंट बताया गया था उसको इतना इतना रिस्पॉन्स नहीं आप जो ट्रायल दे सकते हैं ना इम्यूनोथेरापी कैन कैन बी डन कीमोथेरापी कैन बी डन एंड यू हैव टू गो बिकॉज एग्रेसिव इडोनोकॉर्सिनोमा रिस्पॉन्ड विद द रिसेक्शन ऑफ द पार्ट विच इज इन्वॉल्व प्रोग्नोसिस ऑफ दिस इट करना चाहिए द स्टमक यू नो एज पेलर एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक स्टाइटिस it can develop into stomach cancer it can do the malignant form to 1 to 2% of lifetime risk of the stomach cancer will be there who harbor this bacteria and less than 1% of the risk of the gastric malignant form because do these people have never experienced clinical symptoms having like chronic gastritis or acute gastritis they will come to a clinician ke paas unki baat kare jo aate hi nahi hai to unki baat ho rahi hai फॉर लाइफ से टाइम रिस्क उनका हमेशा रहेगा टू टू परसेंट टू परसेंट स्टमक कैंसर के लिए और माल्ट लिम्फोमा के लिए वन परसेंट अराउंड ये उसकी प्रोग्नासिस है एडिटिकेट कर दें कम्प्लीटली और उसके बाद सर्वेलेंस देख लें इसका कि कहीं रिकर तो नहीं हो रहा तो फिर ये एडिटिकेट हो जाएगा अगर बार बार इन्फेक्शन होगा रिपीटेड इन्फेक्शन विल कॉज इट्रॉफिक गैसाइटिस ये कॉज करती है अगर बार बार होगा बार बार इन्फॉर्मेशन होगा तो इट विल इट विल कॉज ए ट्रॉफिक गैसाइटिस पॉसिबल दैट एज पर आई टू रिस्टेब्लिश इन पर्सन आफ्टर एडिकेशन यस रिकरेंस अब किसी ने करा लिया एक दफा क्या जी मैं पहले एक थेरेपी दे चुका हूँ नो इट इज पॉज इफ इट इज पॉजिटिव इन दी एच इन दी स्टूल यू हैव टू गो फॉर द सेकेंड ट्रायल थर्ड ट्रायल इसके जो है रिजीम्स हैं जो कि लिखे हुए हर जगह मुझे मिलेंगे आपको उसको आप ट्राई दें अनलेस इट इज एडिकेटेड कम्प्लीटली अदर वाई इट विल कॉज द लाइफ टाइम दिस मोर देन आई विल से टू परसेंट फॉर दिसमक कैंसर सो मोनो माउंटिंग एविडेंस एज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल इन द प्रोटेक्शन फ्रॉम सम डिजीज ये इसके अलावा बात हो रही है जैसे कि जी आर डी है बैरेटेज dramatically at the same time as as polarity of presence and decrease this ab isme ek study hai wo ye keh rahe hain as polarity agar jitna as polarity ko aap isko de rahe hain utna jo hai ye esophagus ka barrett esophagus acid reflux disease jo hai uske jo hai na uski presence ki wajah se rise ho raha hai in 1996 isne proof kiya tha ki advanced epithesis The aspirin has been a beneficial effect by regulating the acidity of the stomach contents. Actually, me, ye jo hai na, ye banana apse pehle bhi kada common zil hai. Aur ye maujood hota hai, ye save kar raha hota hai lower part of the esophagus. Magar ye hypothesis ko reject kar diya. Aksar ne several randomized control trials failed to demonstrate the worsening of the GRD following irritation of aspirin. To ye khatam ho gaye baar. Isse pehle ye tha ki GRD se koi association एच पलर की नहीं है इफ यू आर डूइंग द एच पलर आई थेरेपी दैट इट विल वर्स दर्ड ये थ्योरी जो थी ये ख़त्म हो चुकी और वो गए कहते हैं कि नो यू हैव टू गिव द एंटी एच पलर आई थेरेपी बिकॉज अ मेम्बर ऑफ द नॉर्मल फ्रो द स्टमक इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द स्टमक 
he postulated that the changes in the gastric physiology caused by the loss of H. pylori account for the recent increase in the incidence of several diseases including type 2 diabetes, colitis, obesity in the stomach. तो ये भी जो एसोसिएशन जो इसकी एसोसिएशन जो है गैस्ट्रिक फिजियोलॉजी की रिलेट करती है दूसरी डिजीज के साथ ये रिसेप्टर तो मौजूद हैं एच वन रिसेप्टर हैं एच टू रिसेप्टर हैं और उसी तरह से दूसरे रिसेप्टर्स हैं उसकी एसोसिएशन बनती है टाइप टू डायबिटीज से ओबेसिटी से आस्थम से ये भी स्टडी की गई हिज ग्रुप है रिसेंटली शोन दैट एच पॉलर रेगुलाइजेशन एसोसिएट विद लोअर इंसिडेंस ऑफ चाइल्ड आस्थमा अगर आप एच पॉलर को देखते हैं बच्चे में आ रहा है और उसको आसमा है आसमा के जो बच्चे हैं उनको फ़ायदा हो सकता है रेडिकेशन से अब ये बिल्कुल नई बात है ऑबेसिटी के लिए भी यही है कि आप ट्रीट कर रहे हैं लेकिन वो नहीं रही मैनेज नहीं कर पा रहे तो फिर आप एच पल को चेक कीजिए इसने टाइप टू डायबिटीज में रहते जो है आपने कहा कि ये रेजिस्टेंट है डायबिटीज हमसे कंट्रोल में नहीं आ रही रिफेक्टी है उसमें भी एच पल को चेक करें अगर है तो उसको रेडिकेट कर दें तो कंट्रोल में आ जाएगी इसी तरह ऑबिसिटी प्रोग्राम्स भी जो लॉन्च करते हैं वो आसानी से मैनेज हो जाएगा एस्टमा के जो आप प्रोग्राम वो भी लॉन्च हो जाएंगे राधर ये कि हो सकता है ख़त्म के हो जाए एस्टमा ही ख़त्म हो जाए ये बड़ी नई बात है देखें ना ये चीज़ें जो हैं ये नहीं बताई जाएंगी तो आपको तो फिर आगे आने वाले दस साल में फिर आप नहीं समझ सकते अब एक दुमयालय चीज़ जो है ना देखें ये यानी मुख्त जवाब मैंने पहले भी शुरू यहीं से किया था कि ये कहीं कहीं जो है ये ज़्यादातर जो है ये स्प्रोडिक केसेस होते हैं ज़्यादातर सब एपिडेमिक है ये कुछ जोन में अफ्रीकन में अमेरिकन हिस्पेनिक पॉपुलेशन में वहाँ पे उन्होंने अपनी स्टडी दी हुई है हमारी ये स्टडी ये कहती है कि हमारे रीजन में एपिडेमोलॉजिस्ट ये बताते हैं कि सब एपिडेमिक है यानी अगर फर्ज करें कि एक एरिया गढ़ाप का ले लेंगे आप तो वहाँ पर हर तीसरे या चौथे आदमी को पॉजिटिव आ जाएगा ये बिकॉज दे आर ईटिंग सो मच थिंग्स आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस रिसेंट एडवांसेज ये कि इन विट्रो स्टडी चल जाए जैसे फैटी एसिड्स इससे पहले भी मैंने आपको बताया कि कॉलीफ्लावर में और ब्रॉकलाइन में प्रोजोन होता है वो इफेक्ट करता है इसी तरह मैंने आपको बताया कि जो हमारे पास प्रोबाटिक्स हैं जो हम दिखते रहते हैं लोगों को या ये जो लस्सी है कच्ची लस्सी दे आर वेरी यू नो इम्पोर्टेंट रोल सनाजिस्टिक होती है एच पल थेरेपी के साथ ये कहते हैं विटर स्टडी में फैटी एसिड मेनली पोली अनसेचुरेटेड फैटी एसिड अनसेचुरेटेड है बैक्टीरिया सीडियल इफेक्ट तो इसमें आसान तरीका ये है इसको तो ऑलिव ऑयल के एक दो चमचे पी लिए जाए वो जो है ना वो इसकी जो प्रेजेशन को कम कर देता है एच पल के लेकिन ये वीवो में तो प्रूव नहीं हो विटर में तो प्रूव है ये एक नई चीज़ थी जो मैंने बताई कि ऑयल को अगर आप डायरेक्टली ले लेंगे जैसे ऑलिव ऑयल ये जिसको फर्ज करें और किसी किसी में दूसरा मसले हैं कस्टर ऑयल है कॉन्स्टिपेशन रहता है उसको तो उसको ये फ़ायदा करती है इन इरिडिकेशन ऑफ द एच पल दिस इज़ अ न्यू स्टडी विच एज लॉन्च इवन द अदर्स विच आर वेरी वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट बट आर निगलेक्टेड यू नो मैनेजमेंट मैंने उसको भी डिस्कस कर दिया अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम अगेन एज पल एजुकेशन इन चाइना द जनरल पॉपुलेशन हैज पुअर नॉलेज ऑफ द एच पल बट मोस्ट पीपल हैव अ पॉजिटिव एटीट्यूड टूवर्ड एच पी स्क्रीनिंग वो करवाते हैं स्क्रीनिंग बींग एस मैथमेटिक एंड लैकिंग नॉलेज अबाउट टेस्टिंग वट द मेन रीजन रिलेक्टेंस टू बी स्क्रीन अब यहाँ पे तो कोई प्रोग्राम है नहीं ऐसा ना पाकिस्तान ने लॉन्च किया है ना यहाँ के हेल्थ सोर्सेज ने लॉन्च किया है दे डोंट नो अबाउट दे आर दे आर हार्बरिंग दिस बैक्टीरिया इन दर स्टमक और नॉट तो लोगों को ये बताया जाए कि इसको रेडिकेट करना ज़रूरी है अगर ये एसिम्टोमेटिक भी हैं तो फिर भी ये दस साल के अंदर चांस है टू परसेंट का एडोनोकार्सिनोमा हो जाएगा या माल्ट हो जाएगा लिफोमा ये लोगों को समझाया जाएगा तो पता चलेगा ना एजुकेटिव स्टडी टू रेज अवेयरनेस एनहांस स्क्रीनिंग टेस्ट फॉर एच पी इनक्रेज पीपल टू अडॉप्ट जहाँ जहाँ इवन आप तो उसकी बात करें आप अपने हॉस्पिटल की बात देखें ना आपने अपने आप देते हैं लेक्चर स्टूडेंट्स को देते हैं आप अपने हॉस्पिटल में लेक्चर देते हैं वहाँ से स्टार्ट करें ना घर से ये स्टार्ट करें कि भाई इसका रिडिकेशन जैसे डाओ यूनिवर्सिटी हेल्थ हॉस्पिटल है उसके अंदर टेस्ट होता है ये तो आप सारे के सारे एम्प्लॉज का टेस्ट करके देख लीजिए पता चल जाएगा 
कि ये कितने लोगों में पॉजिटिव आता है अगर आता है तो फिर इनको इरिडिकेट करें इस तरह ग्रुप्स वाइज जो है ना आप आगे चलें और लोगों को एजुकेट करें ये बताएं ये क्या चीज़ होती है भाई आज पलर है क्या चीज़ होती है क्या मुसीबत है अब तो कुछ लोग जो आते थे हमारे बलोचिस्तान से उनको पता होता था ये एच पाला वाई पाला वाई करते थे वो वो तो नहीं है हमको ये खुद बोलता था मैं तो हमने कहा चेक कर लेते पता चल जाएगा अगर होगा तो उसकी रिजीम देंगे नहीं होगा तो नहीं देंगे तो ये जो है ना इसमें जो है ना क्वेश्चन है मेरा इंदर और वो क्वेश्चन ये है गौर से सुन लीजिए और ये मैं बात ख़त्म करता हूँ कि एक क्वेश्चन है आपके पास आया है फ्रॉम एन डब्ल्यू एफ पी ही वो स्मोकर है और वो प्रोफेशन वाइज जो है वो गार्डनर है वो आपके पास आया उसने कहा कि जी मुझे ए पी गैस तो फुलनेस रहती है रहती है और जाती नहीं है होम प्रसोल लेता रहता हूँ ठीक हो जाता हूँ फिर हो जाती है अब वो आपके पास पहली मरतबा आया है वो वहाँ उसने ट्रीटमेंट नहीं लिया कोई सवाए उमो पर जोर के या एंटासिड के अब आपके पास आता है वो आपके पास इंसुलिन की वो पूछता है कि मुझे क्या करना चाहिए पहला क्वेश्चन ये है कि हाउ विल यू प्रोसीड नंबर सेकेंड वट इज़ योर लाइन ऑफ मैनेजमेंट लाइन ऑफ मैनेजमेंट में अंदर जो आपको लिखना है वो प्रिस्क्रिप्शन लिखना है अगर वो पॉजिटिव आ जाता है एच पर लड़ाई उसको तो पहले बताया जाएगा ना कि भाई ये क्यों करा रहा हूँ और कह बड़ा पेशाब टेस्ट किया हमने पहले कई दफ़ा तो बड़ा पेशाब ये पखाना टेस्ट किया हुआ है स्टूल एग्जामिनेशन हुआ हुआ है नो 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 ये ऑथेंटिक लैब से कराया जाए एच पर लड़ाई एंटीजिन को और अगर पॉजिटिव आता है तो फिर आप इसको जाहिर है कि एंटी एच पर थेरेपी दे देंगे उसका नुस्खा लिख के बताइए उसका आप प्रिस्क्रिप्शन कैसे लिखेंगे थर्ड सवाल ये है कि उसको आपने एच पलराइज एंटी एंटी पलराइज ट्रीटमेंट दे दिया है मगर वो फिर भी जो है ना उसको सिम्टम्स अपेयर हो रहे हैं तो आपने दोबारा टेस्ट कराया फिर एच पलर पॉजिटिव आ गया अब क्या करना चाहिए और थर्ड फोर्थ क्वेश्चन ये है कि फिर उसके बाद वो ठीक रहता है दो महीने के बाद फिर आता है सेम सिम्टम्स के साथ फिर आपने एच पलराइज टेस्ट कराया फिर पॉजिटिव आ गया अब क्या प्रिस्क्रिप्शन होगा उसका यानी इसका मतलब ये थर्ड प्रिस्क्रिप्शन हो गया फिर वो तीन महीने छः महीने पाँचवा क्वेश्चन है पाँच महीने ठीक रहता है फिर वो आता है दोबारा वहीं से और कहते कि नहीं मेरी मुझे फ़ायदा नहीं हुआ तो अब आपका क्या लाइन ऑफ थेरेपी होगी उसका उसका प्रिस्क्रिप्शन बनाइए तो आपको जो है ना प्रिस्क्रिप्शन बनाना है चार चार प्रिस्क्रिप्शन आपको अलग अलग बनाने हैं पहले तो फर्स्ट अराइवल सेकेंड अराइवल थर्ड अराइवल फोर्थ अराइवल मैं बना सकता था मैं बनाता रहता हूँ लेकिन मैं आपके लिए छोड़ रहा हूँ ये आप मुझे बताएं आंसर करें इसका तो आप व्हाट्सएप पे जो है जो जो लोग मेंबर हैं इसके जो व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप में वो ये मुझे बताएं कि इसको कैसे लिखा जाता है क्योंकि मैंने उन्होंने अगर बता दिया तो वो बात बनी कि नहीं क्योंकि आपकी खुद प्रैक्टिस करते हैं आप लोग आप लोग पढ़ते हैं मुझसे ज़्यादा आप पढ़ते हो तो आप ये नुस्खा बना सकते हो उसका प्रिस्क्रिप्शन बना के दिखाइए आई होप कि ये है ना आज पहले रहेगा इतना लंबा डिस्कशन है ये जो मैंने किया है तकरीबन डेढ़ घंटे से भी ज़्यादा इसने किया था कि ऑर्गेनिज्म बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है कोई कंपेन लॉन्च नहीं होती कोई इसके लिए एक्टिविटीज नहीं की जाती इसकी रेडिकेशन को समझा नहीं जाता आई एम स्ट्रेसिंग ऑन दी दिस एच पल इट इज दी बैक्टेरिया ऑफ द सेंचुरी जिसने कॉन्सेप्ट के लिए डिजीज का क्यों कर दिया कि कोई एंटी जो माइक्रोबोलॉजिकल एजेंट होता है वो किसी भी पैथोलॉजिकल प्रोसेस जो बॉडी में डेवलप हो रहा है पॉसिबल यही है कि वो प्रीडिस्पोसिक एजेंट हो अब हैरान होंगे कि इथ्रोस क्रोसिस जो है ना उन लोगों ने पकड़ा है उसमें उसके प्लाक के अंदर जो है शिलमारिया नमूने को और वो अभी इस पर रिसर्च जारी है कि आधा इथ्रोस क्रोसिस जो है उसका कहीं कोई, कोई, कोई माइक्रोबोलॉजिकल एजेंट तो इन्वॉल्व नहीं है इसके अंदर प्रोसेस में दे आर दे आर डूइंग द रिसर्च वर्क तो हमारा अल्लाह वरम वरह वक्